you. Okay. So you've created such an amazing professional background now Thank with your you YouTube so channel. Much. How do you feel like this has come to fruition and how do you feel like you strategized from the very beginning for it? Um, I don't think I had a strategy at the beginning because uh, when I started four and a half years ago, there wasn't even an existing industry in Turkey. I mean, we didn't even have YouTube Turkey in Turkey, you there know. There was nothing. Yeah, there was nothing. So I was one of the pr first people that started this in Turkey, which was, which is still, I guess, my advantage. Yeah. And um, then slowly I figured out what I want to do, how I want to do things, and things start to get bigger and better. So it was a that. process. Yeah, it was a big process. I mean, my first brand collaboration, my first job was yeah. after almost a year. Okay, so, before so it took that, time to yeah, build up content time. and create a different of brand course, of videos. Yes. Okay, wonderful. So you're working with a lot of different brands in different mm -hmm. industries. How did you create your content while working with all these different brands? Um, it's a bit difficult for us in Turkey because I, I guess it is still a new thing for the brands, for the agencies, and for the influencers, for us. Okay. Um, because people still don't know how to create projects. Um, it, it's getting better. We're getting somewhere, I know, but... Um, Where do you feel disconnected? Yeah, uh, a bit, but um, I like to work with brands that I really like and that I can really fit in my channel and that suits me, that I am using for years and years. And there should be also a good communication yeah. like between yeah. you and the brand. You know, yeah, yeah. those are the successful projects, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, I, what is important for me, for the most important thing for me is, um, I need to have my own voice when I do a project with a brand. And like, keep it authentic yeah, and organic. Keep it, of course, yes. Um, and I think that um, we, the brand and the agency should put their know-how in the project and I should put, sorry, and I should put mine too because I know my audience, I know what I like and I know what they dislike. So it is so important for both of us that if we want to um, collaborate, yeah. collaborate. Like if we want it to be successful, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, do you ever have a situation where you can't accept a project even though it's being monetized? <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes they want us to, you know, memorize lines and they write some scripted projects, you know, and. I don't agree with them because I am not a, we are not an actor, like we are not actors, we are influencers. I am here as Duygu, she is here as Diana, like with our style, with our hair, with our content. So we need to uh, be ourselves. Yeah, and like, it's a bit odd when they ask you something like this because I mean, yeah. you are, your, you should be yourself and your followers right. follow you because yeah. you know, you are who you are. So it should be, yes, you should benefit, the, I mean the brand should benefit from this collaboration as well, but it should be a win-win situation for both of you. And I think the weird thing is they want to work with us. They chose us for, yes, exactly. yeah, you, you know, for what, what we do. What we represent, exactly. But they expect a different thing from us at the yeah. same time. It's a bit weird of them, I guess. And if it's more natural, it will be, you know, the followers will like it more because oh, it's more successful. authentic, it's more yeah. you, and yeah. It's and people will watch the whole video. Yeah, exactly. And the drop-off rate won't be as Exactly, extreme. yeah. Absolutely. So, Doig, you, you did a fantastic collaboration with Bobby Brown, and this is one of the best examples of influencer marketing in Turkey. Thank We'd you. love to hear how this whole project came about. Um, okay, so thank you, first of all. Um, it was a big deal because it was the first project that Bobby Brown did in Turkey uh, with an influencer. I was the face, the first Turkish face in stores, and I was the first influencer that they worked with. And uh, it was a first for us too because um, people or brands doesn't do don't do those kind of things because it's a big deal. I, I said in the beginning that it's yes. still new. It's a still new industry in Turkey. So um, it was a huge deal. Um, we actually my team reached out to them, and oh, okay. yeah, and, and, um, and started off the they started yeah they they had the idea and it was a long process that we had to get confirmation from the 
Europe, from Europe, I guess, from England, I guess. So it was a long process, but um, after the confirmation we got, um, it's, we still had like six months or so. Because it's since, such a big project. Yeah, since yeah. the launch. And the, at the launch party, in two hours, we had um, the products out of stock at online. Which is incredible. So you yeah, which is incredible. Uh, we, we didn't know what to expect. We, we had some input, of course, but we didn't know what to expect. We kind of knew it could be a successful project, but we didn't expect this. So the whole two, we had a collection, by the way. Uh, it, was for, um, it was two sets. And um, we sold out, and it's not available anymore, but it was a great project. That's incredible. Yeah, no, I'm so glad. It was one of my biggest achievements in my career, I guess. We love to hear that. So you also have a clothing line, Do mm -hmm. Istanbul. What was the story behind that, and how did you personalize the brand and make it your own, truly? Um, I have always wanted to study fashion, but it didn't happen for me. Um, so now you have your own brand. Yeah, you which, is, which is crazy. But if, to be honest, if I didn't do what I do now, I, wouldn't, I couldn't do that. Right. Uh, yeah, to be honest. Um, so it was so huge for me. Like, it was a dream of mine. And I didn't think that in a million years I could do that. So um, two years ago, I guess, um, we launched the brand. We, we style online just just for now, like, I don't know, I don't know what happens in the future, but. Um, and I like to design my own stuff because I have a particular style and I guess people like what I wear, how I style them. And are, so, you, are you custom designing all of the pieces yeah, as Yeah, yeah, I, I do designing stuff. I, I don't do the organization and the operation stuff, but I do the design stuff still. Um, I choose everything from the fabrics to the materials. Uh, we do jewelry and um, ready to wear. And um, I do kind of effortless, timeless, and cool stuff, I guess. Yeah. In my opinion, at least. <laughs> and um, I don't know, it's, it's going great. It went really well uh, since the beginning. But I don't know what is going to happen after this because. I have so much to do. I have so much on my plate. So, do you have another product that you want to do? Is there like a book or a product line that you want to start? What's your new venture that you would? Uh, to be honest, I don't. I don't like to talk about my dreams unless I start them. Okay. <laughs> because it it gives me so much pressure that I have to do it now. You, you, it you know. Good. You know. So I don't know for now, but I, of course I have some big dreams yeah. still. Um, and um, I, I want to separate myself a bit from the brand. But I think it's impossible because I'm kind of the influencer of the brand. I'm kind of the face right, of the so brand. Right, so it's attached to you. And yeah, it's persona. very attached to me, which I like. But on the other hand, it's, it causes some problems sometimes. But it's I don't know. It's time consuming. Yeah, yeah it's time cons consuming, of course. But I don't know. And you're like, I just want to produce more videos. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to create more content. Yeah, I have so much to do. I have my travels, I have my projects, I have my videos, I have my photos, I have my yeah. brand, I have the design for it. So the life yeah. of an influence, everybody. <laughs> yeah. 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 Basically. Wonderful. Thank you. So Diana, let's go to you. How do you select the brands that you work with and how do you create content for these awesome so, brands? So um, well when I because I get so many, you know, offers almost daily. Uh, it's really hard to actually try to, you know, find the brand that, you know, it will be a great fit for you. So we can, yeah, I can represent the brand, but also it should be a great fit for my channel, for my Instagram, if I'm working on Instagram. So um, it should be something that, uh, for example, if I use, if we're talking about beauty, if I use right. their products in the past, or maybe a fashion clothing line, the same thing, if I uh, bought their products in the past, if I like them, uh, what kind of experience I had with their products or you know their brand in general. So I look just like at these kind of things. Okay. And what people in general think about the, like the brand, 
if uh, you know they get good reviews, if they're like a trusted brand. Mm -hmm. It's important for me to the, to work with you know a brand that is actually trusted and people yeah, you know a good like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I don't want to you know <laughs> just advertise something <laughs> just for something random. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's right. risky for us. I guess. It's very risky because you Absolutely. you can lose your followers mm -hmm. if you if they don't trust you. Uh -huh. or, yeah. Exactly. So how long do you feel like it takes to get to start getting those brand deals for an influencer? Uh, well, you know, sometimes it's super quick, like uh, probably. But in the lifespan of your of your YouTube career? Uh, well, I actually started getting, you know, like these all these opportunities about sponsorships. Uh, after I had like 200,000 subscribers, because okay. before that I was not thinking about these things. I was not thinking about YouTube as a business, you know, mm -hmm. as a brand. More like yeah. a creative uh, Yeah, it's just, it was like a hobby. I was yeah. just doing, yeah. you know, right. just, yeah, exactly. So you are just doing it for more like for fun and just you want to inspire many people and that's it. You don't think. At that thing, I mean, you don't think that it's more like a work, but then it started to grow bigger and bigger, and you get all these opportunities. It's really hard now to manage everything and to. So, how do you keep control of all the incoming projects that you have, as well as you know the creative fun content that you're also producing? How well, do you balance that? Uh, well, usually I just, you know, I try to, if I know that I have, for example, a project or two for the next month, I will not get any other like new projects because that's too much for me. But, you know, I try to, because I manage myself in a way, right. I try to do, you know, like to go little by little. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> do something maybe stupid because I'm not so much into, I'm kind of like a business lady, but <laughs> not yeah. really, I didn't like learn all these things. So I'm trying to go slow and yeah. to, you know. And it's hard to do that. Yeah, exactly. It's own. hard to manage yeah. all these things by its own. So you need to have either a team or maybe a manager or somebody to, to look after you. So um, how did you start your YouTube and Instagram and what inspired you to do that? Oh, well, I started my YouTube, I think, well, almost five years ago. Uh, so again, it was not really in the beginning of the YouTube life with all these influencers, but it was kind of, you know, back then when not a lot of brands were working with influencers. Or, I mean, it was not like a really developed mm -hmm. area in yeah. a way. There wasn't a crazy algorithm affecting yeah. yeah, yeah. everything. And I was yeah. not thinking about, you know, working with brands or working or developing something really big. Uh, but, you know, I just started as a hobby. So yeah, I just started yeah. to create, you know, like makeup tutorials <laughs> to show girls how to maybe create their own makeup looks for prom or, okay. you know, She's if they want to of eye makeup. Oh, yeah, I make yeah. up. <laughs> exactly. Very cool. It's my passion, so you should, you know, create yeah. something that you are passionate about. So speaking about passions, how do you keep up to date with the trends and create engaging content that encompasses your passions, but also the, the emerging trends that are coming up? So of course you want to be yourself. You want to, you know, to be as natural yes. as possible in front, in front of the camera, but also you need to look at the trends because this way you will reach new audience. You don't want to stick with the same people like for years. Uh, and right now, it's a bit more harder to do this, but yeah. it's still possible. I, I have a question. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. But do you think it is too late now for the for them to start a YouTube channel on this day? It's it's possible. I mean, <laughs> but it's really hard because yeah, it's, it's so hard. oversaturated all yeah. this market. Definitely. And uh, it's really hard to gather a new audience. This is actually the hardest part because once you will gather that audience, they will want to know more about you, you know, yeah. to more about yourself, and then you can develop as a brand. Actually, so that's nice. But the first part is a bit like harder to do, I mm -hmm. guess. So, do you guys ever incorporate your own vlogs in between the, you know? Yeah, creative. I, I yeah. you're producing. Yeah. You do too. Yeah. You do the same. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, we do the same. Yeah, I do makeup, mostly beauty, skincare related videos, uh -huh. some fashion related videos, and some vlogs here and there because they want to, you know, when they follow, especially my followers that follow me for, I don't know how many years now, they want to know more about myself. You know, to have that true kind of connection. So they want, they like to watch vlogs. What are yeah. you doing? Yeah, see what you're doing every yeah. day. Q and, and A's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How you think about certain things Start in life. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So how do the recent changes in Instagram and the YouTube algorithm affect your reach and your day-to-day -day content that you're pushing? So out? yeah, this actually affected me a little bit. So, but I think the best thing to do in this situation is just again to look at the trends. So you gather new audience. You gather new people that can watch you. You know that 
maybe will be inspired by you. And this way you can keep actually fresh in a way, you know, keep your content fresh. And to do something really fun, for example, like Kylie Jenner makeup tutorials because everybody's following and Kylie it's Jenner. It always so works. Kim Kardashian. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, so it's nice to do this, especially especially when they're starting out like a YouTube. Yeah. They can do this. Yeah. They will gather audience. People want to know mm -hmm. more and more. So that's the key here. Okay. Fantastic. Does anybody in the <laughs> audience have a question for these lovely ladies? <laughs> no. About makeup, I don't know. Yeah, but I res respond to comments all the time. All the time. All the time. I, I'm, I stay I'm like one day and then I go through all my videos. I'm the worst. I, I never reply. And especially you know? because I have people that always comment on my videos, like the same people. I have like probably 20 girls that comment on every video, always reply to them because they're my like true, yeah, in a way, fans. So yeah. it's, it's important. And also on Instagram, direct messaging. I try to res re like respond as much as possible. Sometimes I reply to them if I if they ask about the yeah, yeah, some particular thing. thing on Instagram, but yeah, on YouTube. Not but that also, much. you can ask them, you know, for example, what they want to see next. Maybe they have like yeah, a I do that. But pro makeup, a certain look, maybe something like this. It's nice to hear their thoughts yeah, about yeah, yeah, something. Of course, of course, it's Absolutely. nice to hear from them, but. Do you guys ever it's use hard Instagram to keep up polls to gain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is this is actually this is really want. good uh -huh. as well. Yeah. I used it once, you know, to I asked them, I asked my audience, you know, uh, how much you know things about me. I mean, how how much do you know me? And I asked them where I'm from, where I'm living, yeah. if I have brother, sister, what kind of makeup do I like? How about the results? Well, actually, it was like a 20-80 ratio, so the 80 percent were responding. Correct all the oh, time. Ah, so that's awesome. good. Yeah. That's good. So they know you. Yeah. They know. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. <laughs> Thank you for that's your question. Perfect. Thank you for listening, everyone.